Okay, and we're on. So I want to welcome everybody. There's a lot of people here I recognize, and there's some of the people I think who came from other libraries, which is is wonderful. Um, you know, welcome to all of the library patrons from all over the county. I'm very happy that you're all here. And just to remind you, so you know where you are, this is uh, our Winter Tech Labs 2024. This class is going to be on um, photos on your phone, whether it be your iPhone or your smartphone. So if you're not thinking that's what you want to be on, you can stay or you can go. But that's what this class is. We hope you stay. Um, this is our third Tech Labs in the Winter series. And um, as I said, this one is on uh, phone photos. I want to say iPhone, but Pam's going to correct me and say it's any phone that you can take photos mm -hmm. of. Um, it's well, a very I, popular class. IPhone. Yeah, it's a very popular class. So uh, um, lots of people are coming on. We're happy to have everybody. But so Pam Duran, in case you don't know, and a lot of you who have been on these classes know Pam, but some of you don't. Um, I'm going to give you a little bio, Pam, so you can blush or not. Um, Pam is our incredible tech guru. She's been doing our tech labs for the Rojan Library since 2017. And she conducts tech labs on, uh, it used to be in person, now it's on Zoom. Um, she has a master's in learning and emerging technologies and a doctorate in education. So she's one smart cookie and we are happy to have her. Um, I just want to say previously, Pam held the position of education technology specialist. And that was at Putnam Northern Westchester BOCES. Um, I think you did that for over six years. So it was about training and teaching instructional technology to students, mm -hmm. professionals, teachers, all of that. But now, um, and I wanna congratulate you, Pam. I think it's an amazing thing that you're doing. So currently Pam has a new position at SUNY Empire as a digital accessibility coordinator. Um, and, and you can pr correct me, Pam, where you assist people with disabilities to access and interact with websites, digital tools, and technologies. Um, right. So kudos to you. It's a very nice, nice job and happy. Uh, it's going to be great for you. So we're happy that you're here. Um, and without further ado, we're going to go forward in case anybody didn't hear me before. We are recording. Um, so if you don't want to be seen, you can take your, your video off. Um, Everybody should be muted. And if you do want to ask Pam a question, you can unmute yourself. Um, but right now you're muted so that we can just keep out all the extraneous noises. Anyway, without further ado, Pam, take it away. All right, well, thank you. Uh, I'm not a doctor yet. I am working towards one. So I can't, uh, I can't claim that DR yet, but someday, mm -hmm. someday. So tonight uh, we are gonna focus mostly on the iPhone because that is the most popular phone. Um, if anyone does have an Android phone, um, I also use an Android phone. So if you have any specific questions about your Android, feel free to stick around a little bit later. I will answer your questions about the Android phone as well. But tonight we're going to uh, mainly focus on the iPhone. And right now I'm here twice. I'm up there and I'm also down here because I have my iPhone joined. Um, as a participant, so I can share the screen and show you what we're going to work on today. Uh, now, you don't have to take too many notes because I'm going to put in the chat, let me get that over here a second, a lot of the tips that I'm going to share with you today, you can also find at this website, which you are welcome to bookmark and keep. I'll also have a short video that I will show you, um, mainly because there's an interesting feature um, of how to do a, um, a, long, uh, a long focus. And it's kind of hard to do in my short little room. So I have a video to show you how that's done. So there will be a video. And our goal tonight is to show you some of the features of the iPhone camera that you may not know they're there waiting for you to be used. Uh, you will also, will also uh, cover how to edit your photos, how to share your photos, and also um, how you can kind of manage your storage. Because for many people, the photos are what taking up the majority of their storage on their phone. So that will help you go through and uh, manage your storage as well. Um, so I'm going to turn off the camera on my phone right now. 
still up here on the top corner. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. And this is on an iPhone. Okay. Start broadcast. Three, two, one. Good. Okay. Okay, so we're here in a phone. Um, the first thing I want to uh, cover with you is that some features of the phone that I'm gonna show you tonight and some that even I'm missing because I don't have the latest, greatest phone. Um, depends on the operating system that you're using. So if you look on the screen here at the very bottom of the screen is the gray gear, the gray gear. And if you have a number next to it, kind of like the one next to it has a red two, if you have a number up next to this, you may have an update waiting for you. So when I'm on the left-hand column, you'll see here the word general is highlighted in blue. And when I'm on that general screen, there is a software update button. Now I'm not gonna click that right now. I'm gonna click about. Here under about, you'll see that I am running 17.1.1, okay? If you have a number that's lower, some of the features I'm gonna show you are part of a newer update. So wait until after class, but you wanna to go to that software update button and update your phone to see some of the features that you might not have on your phone currently, okay? So I'm gonna hit the home button on my, uh, my iPhone and I am now gonna open the camera app. Okay, so here's my desk. <laughs> I'll point it over here so we can have a nice picture of a, of a box and some flowers. <laughs> okay, so one of the things that very few people know, they know how to take a picture by pushing that white circle on the side there. You've taken a picture. But you can also use the volume up button on your phone to take a picture. So if I push that, and click, that also takes a picture. So sometimes when you're trying to hold your phone really steady, um, it's hard to do that and then hit the glass. And by using that volume up button, it's almost like we've traditionally used a camera. We hold it up to our eye and we can push it. And it's very easy to have a steady, stable camera. Um, so that's one of the features. Also, if you happen to have a set of headphones or you have wireless headphones and it has a volume up button, if you click the volume up button, mm -hmm. you could take a picture from the headphones as well. So if you have a bunch of family together and you want to take a group shot and you don't want to be, you know, doing that traditional selfie thing where you're trying to go out as long as your arm can go and you want to get more of a picture, you can do that. You can use the, the headphones to take that picture. Okay, so next up, what I want to show you is in the phone, in phone screen itself, can you see that there is a slight white line that is in the middle of the screen? It's almost like a hairline. When you tilt your iPad, it starts leveling off with the two lines next to it and it turns yellow to let you know that you're holding your phone straight. Mm -mm. But like I said, it might be something you have to update your phone back. I am updated, but okay. Okay. I, I Do you see it? No. <laughs> right there in the middle. No. I don't believe so it's a slight white like hairline thing. And mine's bouncing in and out. In and out when I touch it, yes. See it? Yep. Okay. So when you use that, like if you're setting up a tripod and you want to make sure that your phone is level and it's straight, 
or even as a simple hack, if you're hanging a photo or you're doing any kind of carpentry and you can't find your level, you can use your phone as a level. You don't have to take a picture. You can use that option to just see if something is straight. So you can use that to take a picture. Of course, you can take your fingers to zoom in and zoom out. So if I pinch my fingers away and then bring my fingers together, I can zoom in and zoom out. But also on the far left-hand side is a slider. So if you can't get that pinch just exactly right, you can also use that slider. Have it nice and smooth. Okay. Now, there's a few hidden spots inside your iPhone. If I wanted to take a picture of those roses that are far away there, see in the blue vase, if you tap on the flowers with your finger using your phone, you get a tight little yellow circle around there, and that centers the focus on that picture. So it makes it may blur out the rest of the items there. It'll make it better. There's also there, it's very light. I'm gonna see if I can take a picture of something darker so you can see it. I'm gonna tap on this box here. Do you see the little yellow sun that shows up next to there? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it again. See that yellow sun? If you press and hold that sun, you can change how dark or how light your picture is going to be. So I'm sliding that sun upwards and downwards. So if you're taking a picture of someone and they're backlit or they're standing in front of a window and it's just, it's washing out everything, you can tap, double tap your screen, find that sun and you can drag it up and down in order to change how much light that you're letting in. Okay, so I'm going to give you a moment to see if you can try that on your phones if you're following along. Mm -hmm. Okay. Be cool. Now, as you can see, I'm doing my very best to hold this uh, steady for you, but I'm not very good at it. <laughs> my hands are shaking a little bit. I'm talking. I'm using that. There is a focus lock that you can use on your phone. So if I was going to, I'm gonna use this uh, little dog I have here. If I wanted to lock on that dog, if I press and hold on the glass where that dog is, you'll see at the top of my screen, AF lock has now shown up at the top of my screen. So now, no matter how wiggly my hand will be, when I take a picture, it will make sure that it holds it steady so I don't get a blurry picture. Cool. So that is, um, that is really handy for me. Now, there's another secret way that you can use your iPhone. And this is really helpful if you're taking action shots. Say you're at a family, um, baseball game, soccer game, you own horses, whatever, and there's something's going by very, very quickly. If you press and hold down either the volume up button or that white button, it does a burst shot and takes, takes like 100 pictures very, very quickly, very, very fast. So I'm going to demonstrate it. Don't do it with your phones. It's really going to add up a lot of pictures. If you've already, uh, if you already storage is up, but let me show you. So I'm going to press and hold the white button. Okay. So now you'll see when I go here and I look, I have a burst. It says burst of 27 photos on the top. And when I tap that, I can take, I can go through and look at the burst pictures that were there. Let me in there. Let me in. It's not letting me in. Here we go. Put in here. Tap. See where it's not letting me go through it. And oh, there we go. Let me go back. 
I will demonstrate this in a second. Let me go back here. Let me go into just my, uh, my photos. Okay, so let's see, where's my, here's my burst photos. So this is a burst of a few photos all in one. And in that series, oh, there we go. If I pass through them, you'll see that I have a series of these photos and I can go through and I can pick the one out of the series that is the perfect photo. So if you wanted to take pictures of say, I'm gonna turn this around to see me again. So if you wanted to take pictures of like a kid playing soccer and you wanna get that perfect shot where the ball is just leaving the foot, it might be one of the 20 that's there. And anyone who's a photographer will tell you a lot of times the perfect shot is one of 40 or one of 50 pictures that you've taken. When you delete that burst shot from your gallery, it will delete all of those pictures. So you want to go through your gallery and you find the one you like, you can say, save this one. And for some reason, my iPhone's not cooperating right now, but I will send a follow-up screencast of how that works to Tammy, and she will share that with everyone here on the call. So the button I just hit now, most people know how to use. It's right above the uh, take a picture white button is the flipping of the camera. Just whip it back and forth to the front and the rear facing camera. Okay. Above that, you'll see that there is a, looks like a little clock and it has a, like a circle and it has a hand going through it. That's a timer. So if I wanted to take a picture, I can select that timer. Right now it's set to off, but I can also set it for three seconds or 10 seconds. So if I were to set this for three seconds, I could then click, but it's, it won't take the picture until after the countdown. Now it's taken the picture. So if you wanted to take a picture and you don't have a wireless headphone nearby that you can hit the up arrow, you can use that timer to delay when your picture is taken. And this one will give you a 10 count. And you can, you can see the countdown, get your hair ready, you know, smile, get ready for the picture. And then it'll take the shot for you. And you can see here, I have my photograph. Okay, I'm gonna pause a moment here to see if there's any, any questions so far. You can go ahead and either put it in the chat or you can um, unmute your microphone. Nothing so far good? Okay, very good. I think, all right, so. Oh, I think I have a question. Oh, there you go. Okay, go ahead. I have a question. Um, I can't get those grid lines on mine. Okay. How I do you do I have I have the latest, um, iOS 17.2. Okay. The latest so it's, far. I can't get, how do you see I those? I didn't have it either, so I'm not sure. Okay. So, uh, I, so grid let's, line. okay, let's go one spot here. I'm going to hit the home button on my iPhone. Okay. I'm going to go to the gear at the bottom. What's the gear? Okay, so that's that gray gear. Mm -hmm. I have it at the bottom. It may be somewhere else on your phone. You may have to page for it. So I'm going to touch it again. Mm -hmm. And then if you look through here. Go to camera. On the left-hand side, there's a camera. Uh, and here is where you can change things. And you may need to turn on grid and level under composition. Exactly. Okay. All right. Teresa, that's where I just did mine too. It wasn't there and now I mm -hmm. turned it on. Okay, so now oh, that you've okay. turned it on, go ahead and try it and see if it's there for you now. <laughs> okay, yes. did that work for you too, Virginia? Success. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> okay. I'm looking. Yes, yes. 
worked. All right. Like I said it's it's a it's a handy little tool. All right. And then also, if you're someone who is a photographer, you know the rule of thirds when you're taking pictures. Um, I'm not a photographer, but I do know that having that quadrant, that tic tac toe board, mm. helps you center and create um, yeah. beautiful photos. So it gives you a, a reference. Definitely. All right. So that's an important one to have. Okay. Now, I'm going to go back onto the phone screen here. And above the timer, I have circled off. It looks like a, like a round circle with a slash going through it. That's a live photo. Now, I'm going to turn it on. Now, the way live photos work, and you can see now that it's yellow, when you take a photo, it's actually taking a short video. So if you've ever gone through your gallery and it's like, it seems like your pictures are moving into position like for a few seconds, yeah. that means that that's been turned on on your phone and it makes a little bit bigger a picture and it takes up more storage. So it's a nice thing to have. Like sometimes, you know, it's just, it's beautiful to look at in your gallery. Like if someone's standing there and hair is blowing a little bit and you take a picture and as you swipe through your gallery, you see the hair move a little bit before it freezes. Mm -hmm. um, that's on, on your phone. It's an effect that can be used with effect, but you wanna make sure that it's not left on because otherwise you have pictures that are way bigger than they usually are. And it does take up a lot of your phone space. Okay, but it does have a nice effect. So I just turned it off and I can tell that it's off because now it's yellow. Now, below and on your phone, it might be, because the way I'm holding it, it might be across the bottom. You have, I see video, photo, and square. That's a scroller. If I scroll from photo to square, it now automatically crops my photo to a square. So if you're someone who likes to use Instagram, um, or likes to have their photos, you know, perfectly square or any kind of marketing materials or headshots or passport photos, whatever you might need. Um, that makes it a perfectly square picture for you. So you don't have to crop it. Now I'm going to move my finger again and I'm going to pick Pano and I'll show you how Pano works. Pano is for a panographic photo. So a big, long photo. So picture yourself on top of one of the mountains here in uh, Hillsdale on top of the Taconic Hills and you're looking out over the valley and you want to get the entire spans or your entire uh, family around a Thanksgiving table. How this works is, and I'm gonna move back here a little bit. We'll do my whole room pretty much. When I tap that white button, I'm going to move now and I'm going to do my best to keep the white arrow on that yellow line. The slower you go, the better. And you can see on that strip there, I'm constructing this very long image, this very long picture. And if you've been to Walmart, they actually have frames for this. They have panographic frames. So I'm kind of going here, here, and here, and I'm gonna hit that square to stop. And now when I look at this, you'll see I have a big long video of my room. And if I zoom in, you'll see there's a little bit of, sometimes there's a little bit of skipping or you might see a little like jaggedness and that all has to do with how smooth you told that arrow while you're doing it. So as you're taking this picture, you wanna try and be as steady as possible, as slow as possible. And you can take some very, very interesting photos. Now, one thing, and I'm gonna just uh, go back to photo here a second and plop it around. I've done this as a game with uh, some of my students in the past. And this is a fun thing to do with other uh, 
other kids in your family, or even if you just want to have some fun, doing a pano picture, you can have someone stand in the frame. And when they move out of the frame, you tell them go and have them run around your back and show up again. And you can have the same person show up like three or four times in the scene in different positions. Um, it's called a pano dash picture. And uh, it's really, it's fun. And if you teach uh, kids how to do it, it's a uh, screen time that's actually creative. And I'm gonna swip here. Now you can also see here uh, above, I have a flash off and flash on. So if you need to turn your flash on or off, that lightning bolt, if you click it on or off, that's what turns your, your flash. It may be in a different position on your phone, but that's what it looks like. I'm gonna go back down now to the scroller. I'm gonna to go to panel. And now I'm gonna scroll all the way up past there to video. Taking a video, you've probably done. I'm just gonna cover it quick in case no one's had the opportunity. Once I click that take a picture button, now that I've switched it to video, I can start taking a video of, um, I could take a video. Oh, well, I can't do it while I'm on call. But anyway, I could take a quick video. The next one on that list is a slow motion. And I can't record on the phone, but you've all seen slow motion on, um, on sports shows. And slow motion video is a lot of fun if you have a dog or, and you want to throw them a treat and catch them in slow motion. It's actually pretty hilarious, the faces that your dog will make trying to catch that. So try the slow motion. And then again, above that, you'll see I have time-lapse. And a time-lapse video is if I were to turn it on and walk away, it will take a series of photos so that something that you take, it's something slow, like a flower opening, or if you point it at the night sky and you want to capture all of the stars moving and it makes the streaks. Time-lapse is a beautiful feature that you can try, okay? So again, because I'm in a Zoom call right now, I can't demonstrate this, but if you have your phone there, you can go ahead and try those features. And then I'm going to switch back to photo a second here. Now, just below or just to the side of your take a picture button is a quick area to get to your photo gallery. So you can see here, here are some of the pictures that we took tonight. I'm paging through. Now, if I wanted to send this photo to a family member, to you know, a colleague, or to someone else, at the very top, you have a square with an arrow going up. That is the send this picture button. So if I pick that, I can then select my photo. I have one already selected at the top. You'll see it's the one there. And you'll also see that it has a blue checkbox. If I wanted to add another picture to this, I could select one here and I can move my finger and select more if I wanted to. Then it gives me a series of options. I can send it by email. I can send it as a message. So if I click email or Gmail, it will then open up my Gmail, which I can then address. I can put in pictures, subject pictures, and you'll see that my pictures are attached to this email. They're ready to go. I can then hit the send arrow and they're sent. So I can send it as a text message. I can send it however I'd like. The heart button is a way to create a favorite. So if this is a picture that you want to find again and you take lots and lots of pictures, but there are certain pictures that you just love, 
and you always like, oh yeah, yeah, I just finished my garden. I want to show you these pictures. And then you stand there with your friend and you kind of scroll, 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 to try and find that one picture. And your friend's very patient as you do this. If you hit the heart, that will put it in a favorites area. And when we get to your albums, I'll show you how you can see those. So that way you can kind of make your your greatest and your best and the ones you want to refer to right there for you. Excuse okay. me, Pam. Yep. You have, um, Barbara has a question and I believe Teresa raised her hand, which I think she might have a question too, but. Sure. There you go. Go ahead. Barbara, you want to go first? Barbara's got it in the chat. Okay. Let yeah, I put it in the chat. My uh, iPhone has a uh, camera function called cin cinematic. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be a video, but why is that different from just plain video? That's an excellent question. You have a very good iPhone. Mm -hmm. Some oh. of the iPhones have only one camera lens on the front and others have multiple. It almost looks like Swiss cheese. And cinematic means that it's, yes, you got two of them there. So what cinematic does is it means it's taking images from those two lenses and combining them into making something more robust, rich, and stronger. I don't have as fancy a phone as yours, so I don't have the cinematic option. But if you do have that and you have the multiple lenses, you can go into cinematic and it gives more depth, more quality. Um, it's a wonderful feature. So kudos yeah, I on you, Barbara. I also seem to have a function uh, that seems to be like an f-stop on a mechanical camera yes. where you can change the depth of focus. Yes. I noticed you that before. <laughs> and that's because you have the extra camera lenses too. So that's a, that's a wonderful thing. So yes, the f-stop. And I have the information on the f-stop and the other handout that I have for everyone. So. If you need, you know, there's some excellent, excellent iPhone tutorials as well. If you are someone who is a camera um, aficionado, someone who is a in-depth photographer, there are a series of hacks and tricks that you can do with your phone, which I'm not going to cover today because it's more about the basics and getting to the tools. But I've seen people like take um, images of like a picture frame and place the frame and then they place the phone down. They put glasses of water in front of them. So they create interesting lens flares. So if you do a YouTube search on iPhone camera tricks, you will find some very interesting things you can do with that wonderful multi lens camera that you have there. And for some of the basic ones too. All right, good question. That was, uh, there was another question in the chat. Uh, or someone had their hand raised? I think that was you, Teresa. I'm not sure if you still have a question, but there was a hand raised, maybe by accident. But... Yeah, I do. Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Yeah, how... Um, yeah, I I wonder how you get... You have your controls on the side, like your, mm -hmm. you know, the white button and so forth, and mine right. are on the bottom. And Is there a way you change that back and forth? Um. I think you can, I know I can with the Android, I can have a second button that I add on there. I don't know if iPhone has added that yet. I'll have to research that for you, Teresa. Um, okay, because I looked in the, in, you know, the settings, the same place where we could get the grid on there. Yeah. I don't see anything. Yeah, I know the okay, Android. Okay, and then I see something in here that says on the settings, uh, mirror front camera. Mm-hmm. And it's mirror. off, which I guess is the default, but what is... Um, that kind of reverses sure your image. So your front camera, your front facing camera, if you wanted to use it for like a selfie, mm -hmm. you would reverse the mirror on it. So that way it looks like you as a selfie, otherwise oh, right. it's going to reverse you. And sometimes mm -hmm. people will do that because of the text that might be taking a picture of, they're facing it towards mm -hmm. themselves. And there's oh. like a banner or a sign and it ends up making the image reversed. So oh, right. it's usually off by default, but you can play with mm -hmm. that. Good oh, question. okay. All right. I will Good say question. that cinematic to the, uh, to the other person who was asking, 
cinematic video and then there's a portrait that's mm -hmm. a still picture is they they what they can do is make the your focal point be in focus and and the background be more yes. blurred and i have like a more, picture of it's that sort of more second. professional looking i guess yes you know i mean if that's what you want so it's fun to play you know, with I'm a... I'm going to stop sharing this one. I'm going to share this uh, screen here. Hang on a second, because I want to show you something. It's a good segue. Thank you very much for that. Second screen, one, share. Okay, so here we go. Let me just bring this over here. There we go. Okay, so this is the same resource that I put in your uh, in the chat before. And I want to show you, because like I said, I don't have the fanciest phone, like some on the call, but I do know the features because at work I had them. Um, here you can see the portrait mode that you had there. So in portrait or selfie mode, where is it? Here's the portrait, final touches. Portrait, I don't know why they are showing it on here. So portrait mode, what it'll do is it'll keep the person that you are focused on in focused, but everything else will be blurred on the outside. So it ends up being a very lovely effect. Okay. There's also on certain phones, if you have it, like I said, supported moments, there's a night mode. So if your camera at the top has a button like this, that allows you to take low light photography. So if you're in a dark restaurant, if you're in a jazz club, if you're out in a field, when you click that, it Which allows- button, Pam, all you're showing is a, a, a view of the mountains. Is there a button that you wanna show us? It's, it's not showing. I thought no, I was it's just showing the-, the um, Oh, the, is this over here? The photo of a mountain. There you go. Can you see this now? Okay, sorry. It was. I have two screens. I was showing the wrong one. Yep, that's okay. Okay, so here at the very top, next to the flash, certain phones have this option, which is a night mode. So if you click that, it opens up the camera lens to let more light in for three seconds as you can see on here. So you have to hold your phone really, really steady while you do this. And you can take pictures in dark restaurants, in, you know, out in the field, um, anywhere it's dark, jazz club, whatever. So you can experiment with that and you can try that in a, in a dark room. It does allow more light to come in. And it, um, you can have your flash on too, because it just it kind of was intelligently decides how much flash to use instead of just bam, you know, and turning it all on. So that is a uh, that is a feature that they have there. I see there's something in the chat here. And Tammy said she was in Death Valley and she learned how to take the night photos of the sky. You do you use your iPhone for that, Tammy? Yeah, I was just a couple of weeks ago. It said, yeah, dark skies or you can see the Milky Way and everything. It's very cool. It oh, works. wow. Yeah, and like taking a picture of the moon. Sometimes you see the full moon. You're like, oh, that's so beautiful. I can't get it on a camera mm -hmm. as well. Try Thanks. using that feature if you have it. All right. So that's something to play with. You know, after after class, you can all go in your closets and start taking pictures. I have something that looks like <laughs> night, but when I... Look at it, it goes off. So maybe it's always on. I'm not really sure. I have to check it. Well, it might be you're too bright a space for it to uh, to work. You can usually oh, take now. pretty good pictures in low light with this camera. Yeah. yeah. So hmm. I'm gonna stop sharing that one. And I'm gonna go back to okay. Let me go back to sharing content with the phone. One, boom. Okay, we're back. Okay, let's go back into the camera. Okay, so I'm going to go into some of the editing features that they have. So the first thing I'm gonna do um, here, I mean, you can you go to your photo gallery or if you're still on your camera, you can click 
that square to get into your current photos. So we're back here. Let me go back to this. Go to that dog. Oh, this is good. Okay. Now, if I wanted to edit this photo, I can go up to the top next to today and select edit. And this gives me all the different tools that I can use to edit my picture. Now, one of the ones that I like to use the most is over on the right, and it might be in a different location on yours, is that wand with the stars coming off of it. That is an autocorrect. It's like an artificial intelligence. So if I click that, it'll automatically make a decision about the saturation, if it's blurry, and it'll show me the settings that it chose. Under mm -hmm. there, you'll see that this comes there. So if you have a picture and you wanna start editing, sometimes I'll use that first, just to see if I like it. If I don't like what just happened, if I think it made a bad decision, I can go up to the top left, and select cancel, or I can hit that little arrow that says, hey, go back, so I can take away what just happened. But if I like it, if I hit the yellow done button, it will save my edits. So I can hit that done on the top right, and now it's kept that. Let's go back into edit. Now, another feature that people like to use a lot is the crop. If you go over to the left on my screen, you'll see there's a crop button and it also shows the turning. I'm gonna to touch that and you'll see now, oh, did it jump out of here? Looks like I'm not sharing, hang on. No. Screen sharing stopped and unexpectedly, no kidding. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come on back. Come on back. There you go. Let's get back in there. Okay, let's get back to that camera. I was in here editing. Go back to editing. Let's go back to our here we go. Edit. Okay. So if I hit the crop button here. You'll see that there's now some bars and lines around. There's white lines and then at the corners I have dark, heavier lines and then at the top I have them. If I put my finger on any of those dark lines, I can crop and readjust my picture until I get what I like. And then when I pause a moment, it's going to zoom in and show me what it looks like. All right, so that's how you can crop. At the very top of the screen now, you'll see that I have, it looks like a triangle with an arrow that flips it around and changes how it looks. And the one next to it will let me turn it so I can turn and flip it around. Okay. And then once I like things, I can say done. Another feature is the ability to write on your pictures. So if you look up where I have done, there's a circle and it looks like, like a little person or a pen in there. If you touch the pen, you get markup features. So you can draw on your picture, whoops, excuse me, Use this and draw on it. Look at this. You can add stickers, add text. I'm going to add a sticker. There we go. Put a sticker on there, which is sometimes helpful. You I'm can sorry, also. Yeah, where, where did you find that actual? Where did, you, where did you find this where you can Let actually do the pen, the pen and the I'm going to cancel. Sorry. And I'm going to get done here. So if I'm in edit. Right. Okay. 
then up near the top right on mine, you see it looks like a circle and it has like a, the tip of a pen at the very top. It's like, if you see revert yeah, and you go over three yep. to the left, yeah. that's where you find the pen tools. Got it. And you also have the ability to add a signature or a shape. So if you've taken a picture of a document and you want to sign it, you can sign it. So you have all different tools here. You also have a ruler and a way to measure. You can add descriptions or text. So um, one time I took a picture of my house and I had hid a key and I kept trying to explain to my friend where they would find the key and they just weren't getting it. So I took a picture of the actual flower pot and then like drew an arrow to make it very, very clear that you would find it in the flower pot that doesn't exist in front of my house anymore. There's no, outs there was only a one-time thing since it's a public forum, just to make sure. <laughs> no one comes to join me for coffee, all right? Now here you can also see when you're in text, I have right now I'm selected um, draw with finger. There's the settings over here, those three dots. If you have a pencil, you can use uh, an Apple Pencil there. So here I should be able to now draw with my finger. Let's do blue. We have blue, so you can see I can draw with my finger on here. And again, to the very, very left, I can take things away and erase it as well. So you have uh, many different options for marking up there. Okay. Uh, next on the left-hand side, I have filters. And by clicking that, I have the original filter. And then if I move through, I can change through a variety of filters. And you can try that with your own phone too. So you can create some nice effects using filters. And then also over to the left here uh, is adjust. I'm going to just cancel that. Back to edit. Adjust allows me to adjust exposure by using the slider here. So a lot of those filters, you can create your own style brilliance, highlights, add shadows, contrast. I'm just going to go through brightness, black point, so you can see it goes into darker areas, color saturation, and then like you can go on. There's a variety here. So you can adjust and do some artistic effects to your pictures using the adjust button there. Okay. I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to discard all these changes. And we're back here. You also have over to the far right, there's three dots. And this is where you can hide photos or start a slideshow, add them to albums. And we're gonna go into uh, the, uh, the phone storage in a second. Okay. And adjust the date and time or adjust the location. So if you wanted to change the location or say, you know, mom's house or where you're going, you can put that there. If you look next to edit, there's an info button. This is where you can add captions. It gives you a little information about what settings were used when you were taking that photo. So if you end up taking a great photo and you're like, how did I do this? Did I have the F stop on? I did so many cool things and I can't remember how I got this effect. That's where you find out how you took that photo and what your settings were. So you can kind of uh, recreate that magic again, if you uh, wanted to. Okay. And it also, if you did any kind of editing or fixing, it'll let you know what the fixes were in the next. Okay. 
All right, so I'm going to go to all photos, which is- we got a couple of questions in the chat. Okay. Let's see, what do we got? When you, there's two very good questions. It says, I added a description expected to be added to the photo, but I do not see where it appeared. It's the, when you use that description in the, um, the eye area there, let me just go to here. If I'm um, editing the description or adding a caption, it's going to be under the hood. It won't appear on the screen, but when you go into your albums, it'll be like keywords that are kind of, you can't see, but it'll help you find them. So if you had a keyword in there that said, you know, my garden, my garden, my garden, or whatever, when you search for my garden, it will bring up those photos. So that's what the captions will do. It doesn't actually like, not like a meme, it doesn't put like a caption underneath. If you wanted to add a caption, you would use those editing tools that we were using before. If you make changes to your photo, yes, you are changing your original, um, but it, sometimes it'll ask you, do you want to create a new photo or do you want to overwrite the original? It depends on the operating system, whether you have an older one or a newer one. Older ones, it'll just overwrite it. Newer ones, it'll ask. But on those three dots that we had on the top there, you'll see it gives you the option to duplicate. So if it's a really precious picture and you're not 100% sure it's gonna get overwritten or not, I would use that duplicate button so that way you know for sure you got, you're safe and you can go ahead and edit. Okay, good questions. Uh, the info button is the eye that looks like a circle at the top, there's a question in the chat. So it's an eye that looks like a circle and that's where you can get the information. Okay, good questions. Okay, so I am now in all photos, which is what I clicked way back when, here at the top, it says all photos. You can also get to all photos by going to the picture that at the bottom looks like a pretty flower it's in between my zoom and my gear. Those take you to the same place, okay? So here, this is where you can see your all photos. And if you look at the very bottom and the last row there, the first one, has the little yellow, white heart. I've marked it as a favorite. You see it has a little white heart in the corner. And over uh, to the right, two steps, you see it's kind of like a, a wedge on the corner. That's telling me that's the panographic long photograph that I took. So as you're looking at your gallery, that's how you can, um, you can see what's there. Okay, so right now I have mine sorted by year. But if we go over to the right, to the left, where right, right above where it says July 10th, there's a, looks like a panel there. If you click that, this is how you can sort and view and look at your different um, photos. So before I was saying you have like those special photos that you want to see just the favorites. If I click favorites on this side, it only brings up those photos with the hearts on it, the ones that I marked as my favorites. I'm gonna go back to that menu again. I can go to recents. I can go to video types. So if I wanna see just the burst, um, just the live photos, just the selfies. So all of those things there, okay. Recently deleted, you can click there. So if you've deleted a photo and you're like, oh no, oh gosh, I didn't mean to delete that one. You can go there and it's like your recycle bin. Uh, mine has a lock next to it because it's protected. It has to be only me who can bring back 
the photo. So it'll ask me for either my thumbprint or your pin code if you see that lock next to it. All right. Now, two down from favorites is search. So if you took the time to put that caption on your photo, this is where you would hit search and you could search for that caption and you can bring it up. So if I hit search here, it automatically creates some categories for you, which is very helpful sometimes. You know, so it says it's found bicycles, babies. <laughs> that, that's my husband when he was a baby. <laughs> I love that picture. Anyway, art, vehicles. So it'll create sort of a category list for you. So this is another way that you can search through your phone and find things. This is also a nice way to maybe clean out some of your photos with this category because you just have, usually it's just like this mass of photos. You're like, do I need this? Sometimes if you put the categories together and you have a category that's all like French fries or something, you know, how many pictures of French fries do you really need? So this is a nice way to do it. You can also search your photos too for places, lakes. So I think that was like Lake George. Great Lakes region, lake. It'll show me all the photos that have a lake in it. Moments taken by a lake because it recognizes the location in there. So you have that option. I'm going to hit cancel to go back. And now I'm going to hit that menu key again. All right. So my albums towards the bottom here. When we were in the photo, one of the options when we hit share was add to album. So you can create albums for your photos. So if you wanted to create a category, let's make one for a new album and let's call it Pam's office because that's where we took a bunch of pictures of tonight. Pam's office, save, okay. So now that I've done that, it's now offering me all of my pictures here and I can go through and I can select them to be added. And if I'm not really sure of what it looks like because the picture's small, you can press and hold and it'll make it a little bigger for you. Oh yeah, that one I like. So this is all the pictures from my office tonight. There you go. And now that I've picked all the pictures that I want in my album, I can select add. And now you'll see I have a Pam's office. So that is um, a way that you can go through. And when you want to add more to it, I just select that album. And you see I have a plus sign here. By clicking that plus, I can once again look for items to add to my album. I can also have the same search feature that we had before. I can click here and I can search for lake. Oh, there's the lakes. And I can decide whether or not I want to add those lakes in there. Now, one last thing. Um, and I will, I will be the, I know it's, it's 745 now. I'm always the last person to leave these meetings. So if you have any questions that I haven't covered yet, I will stay until the very last person leaves. So if you have any questions, please stick around. Okay. And one last thing I'm going to show you here is in the gear the general area here. If you go on the left-hand side here, see you can see here, I'm gonna to go to settings at the very top and I'm gonna type the word storage. Right here at the top, it says storage general on the left. I'm gonna click that. This tells you how much storage is being used on your iPhone. 
and it gives you all the different items and you can go into review large attachments and you can see what are the largest photos or items that are taking up room on your phone to give you an idea of opening up space on your phone. So it's an area where you can go and help you curate um, what's going on with your phone there. And I'm gonna stop sharing and go back here to see everyone. Okay, and start video. All right, so that is, I mean, that's a lot to fit into an hour because I'm trying to cover many, many things. Uh, like I said, I will stay here to the very last moment. So if you have uh, enjoyed tonight, you're welcome to stop off at any time. I'm not going to be upset or mad about that. Be happy that you came. Um, but again, if you have any more questions, I'm going to stay here to the bitter end. So if you have any more questions, please unmute. I got one. Okay, Marianne? I have a question. Oh, sorry. Oh, Jim, you need to turn that off because it's got a reverberation. Sorry. Okay. It's okay. You're still on. You're still on mute, Marianne. You can put your question in the chat too. If that, maybe I think you got it. Let's see. My husband and I are side by side with the computer. So. <laughs> To another room. Okay. Um, my question is: are, Do you have any tips for going through and edit and deleting photos? I seem to only be able to do it one photo at a time, and I'm sure there's a better oh, way. Oh, sure. Let me show you that. So I'm going to go into. I'll delete all the photos that I took tonight. Okay. That'll help me too. So, because as much as I like my house, I don't need that many pictures. <laughs> um, <laughs> so okay so let me go i'm going to go into my photo gallery here and let's go into my recents okay so if i um press and hold that's delete right and that, that's deleting all the bursts but if i go to the very top of my screen you see the word select that i have yes. there great if i pick select now i can set off a checkbox on everything that I want to delete. I think that's everything. And now I have the trash can at the bottom. Yeah. And when I touch that, it asks me, do you want to delete 65 pictures? And I didn't think I selected 65 pictures. No, I didn't so see that. Not going to, <laughs> I'm not going to say yes right now because I'm not sure what my crazy little finger just did. But then it could be there's a lot in the burst, but I'd rather do that more carefully. But that's that is the way you would do it. So you just hit select, and then you can pop, 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 and pop off the ones that you want. Okay. You also can pick multiple things to send too. So on one side of the screen, I have a trash mm -hmm. can to say goodbye, but right. I also have the option of sending a whole bunch of pictures the same way. So select allows you to select multiples. That you can also them. go into utilities and you'll find duplicates and you can eliminate duplicates there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good to know too. And then yep. one more question is when you add a photo to an album, is it still in all photos or is it just yes. in the album? No, it's in, still in all photos too. It's so still here's in all Pam's photos. office yeah. and you'll see Pam's office are still in my recents and all your photos. So they're all still there. But it's, it's not like they're duplicating it. It's just that it's addressing it in different ways. Yeah. It's kind of creating like it's a storage catalog. Yeah. Yeah. It's not <laughs> like you put like the same picture in three different albums. It wouldn't like you wouldn't have four copies though. Yeah. I kind of you remember the uh, the old card catalogs would be one book on the shelf, but there would be a whole bunch of cards as one for the subject, one for the author, one for the title, sure. and we go through. It's the same kind of principle. It's one picture, but you're making a card catalog. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Pam, it's, Nan it's Nancy. I have a question. When you want to send a photo, 
Mm -hmm. And it gives you the option of small, medium, large, and actual size. Mm -hmm. What's the best size to send it? Uh, it depends on what the person receiving. Uh, the large is going to be an absolutely gorgeous picture that could be brought to Walmart and printed out and put into a frame. A small one is going to take up less room on the person's phone and on your email. And also, if you're not on Wi-Fi, you know, you could get, if you don't have unlimited plans, you could be getting, sending a large file that could, um, you know, eat up some of your bandwidth, eat up some of uh, what you're allowed to send if you're not on your Wi-Fi. So it depends on the situation. Most times I'm sending just a, a smaller size because it's enough for a reference. Um, but if I'm sending a picture that I want to use for marketing purposes or for, um, uh, you know, for uh, anything that's going to be printed out, you know, and, and onto actual photo paper, it will be a larger one. So it's, it really depends on the situation, but it's an excellent question. Okay. I hope that helped. Yeah. Okay. Most of the time with text messages, I don't pick the full size one. No, but if it's like my grandchildren, I want to send it to somebody. Yeah. I usually hit actual size. I don't know if that's right or yeah. not. You can. I mean, it depends on, I mean, eventually uh, the storage on your attachments on your phone is going to get uh, big. You know, so I may eat up some of your storage, but it's not. Um, but like if, if you're sending pictures to your grandkids and you want them to really see it and see it beautiful, it's really it depends on the picture. It depends on the situation, right. you know. Okay. So. Let's see. Anyway, Virginia Martin, you have your hand raised. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, where did you find that grid? <clears throat> showing the recent photos. I haven't been able to come across that. Sure. So I'm going to go here back into my gallery. All right. Now under, over to the, under the photos, gallery. That is right. Yeah, my photo gallery. It looks like the, like the pretty flower with lots of colorful petals on the bottom Got on it. my screen. Got it. Yep. Okay. So then over to the far, um, left on the top is a box and it looks almost like a menu with a little bit of lines going right above where July is, July 10th. Yeah, mine doesn't look like that. Okay, it might look a little different. Right. Mine is on the lower, the albums mean it's, mine's on the lower right. Yeah, yeah. is it albums? Uh, well, well it's, I have photos. It's the menu that pops out to the side. Mm -hmm. I have that. Yeah, I, see, I won't get that. And sometimes also, if you can't find the button, you can also swipe your finger across the screen from the bezel towards the center from the left for me. Okay. So try going like the different from your bezel towards the, the side or the top or the down up. What's the bezel? Uh, that's like the frame, the outside oh. edge. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so try try flicking your finger over and see if that brings up. Yeah, no. At the bottom, I have library mm -hmm. for you, albums, and search. Okay, click uh, uh, library. Yeah. You say favorites and recents. You don't have recents listed there, huh? I have years, months, It'll dates, be. and all photos. Okay. It'll be in the al it will be in the albums. There'll be a recents. Right. You okay. Find mine. It's yeah, a, under it's one of the albums, it does have it. Like it's already canned. Under, it's already, so it's here under albums. albums. Oh, you know what? I see it. Yeah, it's under albums. Yep. Got it. Got it. Thank you. All right, so you can pop in through there too. All right. They give you multiple ways to get around. Yeah. Okay. I can't, I can't usually get that side, you know, the left side menu. Mm. Unless I'm on my iPad, but on my iPhone, I have to go through different other ways. I can't get that other. Okay. I guess it depends on the site or, I mean, the phone, there's so many different phones too. But I know. You know I have a smaller, you know, <laughs> I don't have. <laughs> Let me see. There's a few things in the chat. I want to make sure that I got. Mm. How long do recently deleted photos stay in the trash bin? I think it's 30 days. 
And I think you can change that setting too. Let me see. Cancel. It's a camera. Let's see. Grid level, record. Observe and depth control. Okay, so you have a few more settings there, but no, I don't see that. It's usually 30 days on that. But let me see, I'll go into my uh, my trash and it should say. Let's see. Um, items that we says show the days remaining. So it depends on uh, the photo. So you'll see here my recently deleted photos. It says in 29 days, these are all going to delete. So if you're in your trash, it'll tell you how many days left. So it's 30 days. But it has a little countdown for you to, to let you know. And if you wanted to restore any of this, you just click the picture and select recover if it was something you didn't want to. Or you can hit the delete to just not wait 29 days. You really hated that picture. You can get rid of it immediately and forever. <laughs> okay. okay let's see. Does anyone have any more questions? So we we still have 18 people poking around on their phones. Go ahead and some of these. <laughs> it's okay. It's a, lot, it's a lot to take in, you know. There's it lots is to, a lot to take lot, in. Lot to learn. I said, and some of the most wonderful things out there is I call it YouTube University. There on YouTube, you can find some incredible you stuff. You know, people have come up with these outrageous ideas of what to do with their phones to create interesting video effects and you know, and different photo effects. They're very creative people. Put their, you know, if they're feeling, I saw one person attach it to a weather balloon and uh, send it up with yeah. the video running, which was pretty wild. Um, another person put it in a Ziploc bag and submerged it in water. I don't know how comfortable right. I feel I about that. that. <laughs> By the way, for all the, the 15 people that are still here, you know, Pam is always available. If you have questions after this session, you can send your question to the library, to Tammy, to me, um, and we'll pass it on to Pam. She will answer you at any time, anytime, day sure. or night, right, Pam? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So Happy if it's not here it. and something comes up as you're going along mm -hmm. and you have some questions, um, she'll be able to answer them at another time. Oh yeah, definitely. So and, it's not just and, a session. Right, and we've done like deeper dives into phone storage and cleaning right. out your storage and organizing your photos. I mean, this was kind of a more of an overview to cover a lot of no, the There was a lot. There was a lot in here. And, and you know, thanks everybody for keeping in there. The next session is March 6th. And I think that's a really good one as well. If you are traveling or if you have mm. family, if you have people that speak different languages, it is great class to learn about uh, other languages other than English. So you can really, really benefit by uh by taking this one, I think it'll be a good it'll be a good one. That's on March sixth. Two weeks. You tried that too, didn't you? When you went traveling, did you? Yeah. Oh, I have I have like four traveling apps on my phone. <laughs> I go from one to the other. Some of them give me better um, better translation or better information. But yeah, so yeah. it's a good one. It's a really good one, and you don't have yeah. necessarily need it for traveling either. I mean, yeah, sometimes you it's encounter helpful. people that that speak different languages. So that's a Especially good one. Especially if you're success. in education, like yeah. where, where I came from, we had a lot of students of different right. languages that we uh, we had to help and, you know, their families. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a very interesting, or if you're just learning a language or want to learn a language, it's a, right. a helpful tool for that as well. So it's, and it's so, all free. Anyway, it's eight o'clock. I think it's time everybody should, you know, call <laughs> it a day. <laughs> Let's call it, a, call it a night. Pam, you were right. great. This was a great session. Thank you very much. And thanks, right. everybody. Pleasure, in there. pleasure to be with everybody again. And I'll see you in two weeks. Two weeks. Thank you. Thanks, All everybody. Right. Bye. Bye. Right. Take care. I'm hanging up, Pam. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. <laughs> Take care. I'll see you soon. See you.